Welcome to video 3 for this unit on rigid transformations and congruence. In this video, we're going to focus on congruence. Congruent is a new term for an idea we have already been using. We say that two figures are congruent if one can be lined up exactly with the other by a sequence of rigid transformations. For example, triangle EFD is congruent to triangle ABC because they can be matched up by reflecting triangle ABC across AC followed by the translation shown by the arrow. Notice that all corresponding angles and sides are equal. Here are some other facts about congruent figures. We don't need to check all the measurements to prove two figures are congruent. We just have to find a sequence of rigid transformations that match up the figures. This is because we know lengths and angle measures stay the same under rigid transformation. A figure that looks like a mirror image of another figure can be congruent to it. This means there must be a reflection in the sequence of transformations that matches up the figures. So how do we know that two figures are not congruent? If we copy one figure on tracing paper and move the paper so the copy covers the other figure exactly, then that suggests that they are congruent. If they don't line up, then the two figures cannot be congruent. Here, the copy lines up, which is what we expect since we've already defined a sequence of rigid transformations that line these two triangles up exactly. Let's consider some other polygons. If there is no correspondence between the figures, where the parts have equal measure, that proves that the two figures are not congruent. In particular, if two polygons have different sets of side lengths, they cannot be congruent. For example, the figure on the left has side lengths 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1. The figure on the right has side lengths 3, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1. There is no way to make a correspondence between them where all corresponding sides have the same length. Comparing the side lengths helps us recognize that there is no way to define a sequence of rigid transformations that line up these two figures exactly. Next, if two polygons have the same side lengths, but their orders cannot be matched as you go around each polygon, the polygons can't be congruent. For example, rectangle ABCD can't be congruent to quadrilateral EFGH, even though they both have two sides of length 3 and two sides of length 5. They don't correspond in the same order. In ABCD, the order is 3535 five, or 5353. Five, In EFGH, no matter how we say the side lengths around the polygon, they don't match the order of ABCD. Lastly, if two polygons have the same side lengths in the same order, but different corresponding angles, the polygons can't be congruent. For example, parallelogram JKLM can't be congruent to rectangle ABCD, even though they have the same side lengths in the same order, 3, 5, 3, 5. The angles are different. All angles in ABCD are right angles. In JKLM, angles J and L are less than 90 degrees, and angles K and M are more than 90 degrees. To show two figures are congruent, you align one with the other by a sequence of rigid transformations. This is true even for figures with curved sides. 
This means that the distances between corresponding points on congruent figures are always equal, even for curved shapes. For example, on these congruent ovals, corresponding segments AB and A'B' have the same length. To show two figures are not congruent, you can find the parts of the figures that should correspond but that have different measurements. For example, these two ovals don't look congruent. On both, the longest distance is 5 units across, and the longest distance from top to bottom is 4 units. The line segment from the highest to lowest point is in the middle of the left oval, but in the right oval, it is 2 units from the right end and 3 units from the left end. We can see that the two segments for each oval do not intersect in the same place. This shows the ovals are not congruent. Thank you for watching video 3 of 4 for this unit on rigid transformations and congruence.